Hello everyone, I'm Greg Weaver. Welcome to the Audio Analyst. Pardon me. Before we move into today's topic about loudspeaker setup basics, I want to thank all my current subscribers and remind all new viewers that if you are enjoying these conversations, if you find any merit or value in, in the information I'm sharing here, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share links to your favorite episodes with your friends. And please leave your comments and questions. I love hearing from you. Should you wish to take an active role in supporting the channel and in the process receive exclusive access and content, consider becoming a patron. You'll find a wide range of Patreon subscription levels available to meet any budget or level of generosity. Or if a one-time donation makes more sense for you using Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, the necessary information is available in the comments section. I want you to know that your support at any level ensures the continued production of these conversations and is most sincerely appreciated. Thank you. Today, we're going to discuss loudspeaker setup basics. Now, after watching episodes four and five here on the channel, which address many of the primary concerns with our chosen listening environments, you should have developed a clearer understanding of frequencies and the, their resultant wavelengths. Now, these principles are vital to understanding how the room in which we select to assemble our audio gear affects the resultant sound our loudspeakers are able to reconstruct within that space. It should be clear that in any listening environment, the final sound that arrives to our ears is the inseparable combination of both the direct sound created by the loudspeaker's transducers, as well as all reflections of those original sounds by room boundaries and other objects in the listening room. The direct sound essentially travels straight to our ears from the speakers, while the numerous reflections, rebounding from virtually every hard surface in our listening space, reaches our ears at some distinct time after the original information. This is important to acknowledge because, as a general rule, the original sound from the speakers can be seen to be primarily responsible for the imaging and sound staging attributes of the recorded sound field, while that myriad of reflected sounds contributes significantly to the collective tonality and overall sense of space and ambient field that we hear. Those reflected sounds will combine rather significantly to impact the system's overall sonic character, its ability to portray a sense of richness or leanness, as well as how it conveys the reverberant nature of the recordings. Our goal in selecting a position for our loudspeakers in our room would be to find a location that will maximize their own native capabilities with the benefits derived from the desirable diffused room reflections, while at the same time effectively diminishing the impact of unwanted hard reflections. Now, <laughs> you may be surprised at how many websites are out there that offer calculators that use your, your provided room dimensions and their preferred algorithms and physical rules to calculate the perfect placement for your loudspeakers in that room. When I typed speaker placement calculator into Google search, I got about 6,500,000 results. That's insane. Now, you are, of course, welcome to play with some of these. And, and in fact, a few may actually get you to a very reasonable starting point. But they are all mostly a waste of time. So, how do you get started? Well, we must begin by acknowledging that the correct geometric relationship between the loudspeakers and the listening position requires that the listening position be exactly at the midpoint between the two loudspeakers and an equal or slightly greater distance 
from uh, the front of the loudspeakers as the speakers are apart from one another. And while I'm thinking about it, it's important uh, to point out that using and positioning monitors as opposed to floor standing models, uh, it's important to make sure that uh, your speaker's tweeters are as close to what will be your ear level at your listening position as possible. So be sure to choose sturdy speaker stands of the appropriate height. You don't want to be too low, you don't want to be too high. Saves a lot of effort trying to set the room up. Now, to save time and to get the best results in our placement dance, uh, I recommend the use of something like the Bosch GLM-20 Blaze, a laser measuring tool. They sell for under $50 on Amazon and are accurate to within one-eighth of an inch at their maximum distance of 65 feet. They're really good. Uh, I've included a link to one of these in the comments section. Now, of course, you can use a tape measure or you can use masking tape on the floor marked in at least one half inch increments. But I assure you, something like the Bosch device will make the work much less of a chore and minimize a lot of error and mistakes and save a lot of time. Totally. Next, the size and shape of your room will have some sway over not only where we end up, but where we start. So depending on your room choice, you may also make a choice between long and short wall orientations. Now, as a rule, arranging speakers with the short wall behind them will favor center focus and keep both your speaker and listening positions further away from a reflective wall. Whereas the long wall orientation may favor the recreation of a wider soundstage. Once you have settled on an orientation, the room dimensions will give us a sense of where to start. Typically, in larger rooms, say 25 feet or more in length, you may want to start with the backs of the speakers about 10 to 15% of that room dimension into the room away from the front wall. If you have a smaller room, say under 15 feet, you may want to start anywhere between 20 and 33% of that room dimension into the room away from the front wall. Now, as to your starting width, if your speaker manufacturer recommends a minimum distance between the speakers and you have the space, you may start there. Typically, we'd like to see something like eight feet or so of separation between the speakers if possible. Now, keep in mind, you may have to start with them closer together, especially if your room is less than about 14 feet wide. But start as wide as you think may work, but keep the speakers some two to three feet away from the side walls. Guys, unless you're going to incorporate some kind of diffraction absorption method at the speaker's primary reflection point on those side walls, Positioning them much closer than that may be problematic. And for now, make sure that both speakers are facing straight ahead. Don't use any tone at this point. Okay. We are now ready to begin uh, to optimize bass, mid-range, treble, the coherence of all three, as well as staging and image focus. Now, I use many different recordings, ranging from pink noise, including symphonic and chamber music, uh, female vocals and piano music, and, and cue sound recordings. But you should use recordings you know really well. It's important. Now, here are three more general guidelines or rules. Bass performance will be most dramatically affected by proximity to the wall behind the speakers. Mid-range will be most seriously affected by proximity to the side walls. And treble will be most affected by towing angle. Now it's time to put on some bass heavy music, turn it up, and get to work. Using your laser or tape measure, 
or masking tape on the floor running front to back alongside the speaker and marked in half inch increments. Start by slowly moving each speaker backward first in small increments. Then go to your listening seat and listen to the quality and quantity of the bass. We are looking for a location where it cleans up and becomes tighter, cleaner, and more defined. So, moving it back a little bit at a time, once you find a good sounding location, mark it with masking tape so you can uh, easily find it again. Then, keep going. At least a few more moves. Just to be sure you found the optimum sounding location. Once you have that marked, move them back to your original starting point and start moving them forward into the room in small increments. Again, until you find a good sounding spot. Mark it and keep going with regular moves and for the same reason. Now, if you find several good spots, you will likely prefer one, one location sonically over another. And if more than one is acceptable to you, one location may be better aesthetically or for the traffic patterns in that room. Now keep in mind, you may need to move the listening location forward or backward if you've moved the speakers any significant distance away from their initial baseline of your original equilateral triangle, or original rule. Now, there's an additional technique I have found that, that might be useful, though not always. Uh, and it is to back up to, uh, against the wall behind the speakers while they are at your starting point. Slowly start walking forward into the room while paying close attention to the quality of the bass. Now, at some point moving forward, bass murkiness and boom will tighten up and will sound much more clean and clear with better transient speed. Mark that location with a piece of masking tape as well. That may represent the, bass, the best bass performance available in that room with those speakers. Now at that point, move both speakers to that position, placing their backs parallel with that line, and be sure both speakers are equally distant from that front wall. All right, next, select and start playing some appropriate music to begin the mid-range tuning process. I typically try to use material that has a good balance of transients, fundamentals, and harmonics typically featuring female uh, vocals, uh, piano, that kind of thing. And guys, be prepared to start what may be the most challenging part of this setup. Now, being careful to maintain your speaker's proper distance from the front wall, start to slide the speakers left or right in small increments, just a half inch or so at a time. Uh, that may sound a bit extreme, but the tonal balance differences that can be heard in changes this small can be remarkable. You may move the speakers one at a time or both synchronously, but you are looking for a placement that delivers the best overall tonal balance with no frequency band accentuated or diminished. Don't be afraid to mark a spot you like and keep going. You may be surprised at what you hear and what your choices come down to. And guys, don't be surprised if you find a placement that is dramatically better than all the others. Again, if the baseline width of the speaker placement is much wider or narrower than your starting position, consider repositioning the listening position to accommodate that change. Now, one rather important tip as you move your speakers, it's very important not to have the lowest woofer of your loudspeaker share the same distance away from any boundary in the room. The ceiling, the front wall, the floor, or the side walls. To avoid any unnecessary standing wave reinforcement. It's a problem you can't beat. Okay, now moving on to the treble or the upper octaves and the soundstage and imaging attributes. I often select music that features well-recorded cymbals, vocal music, and recordings uh, that 
utilize Q Sound. Um, by the way, guys, I've included a listing of recommended music for dial in in the comments section. Now, if your speakers have parallel sides, not all do, but if they do, your starting point for this tuning session will be to angle each speaker toward the listening chair just so that you can see inside the, the inside edge of both speakers. So you're going to turn them so that you can just see down inside that inside edge. If they're not parallel, if you don't have parallel sides, you can use the Bosch laser or any other laser type pointer. You align it on the top of your speaker so that it is centered on your tweeter and is parallel with the enclosure. Then angle each speaker so that when the laser is in it in that position, it hits at about 8 to 10 inches to the right from the right speaker or to the left from the left speaker of the center of your correctly positioned listening chair. Okay. If you find um, that you have too much high frequency energy, you might angle the speakers outward a bit. And the opposite is true. You may tow them in if you find uh, uh, that you need a bit more trouble. Now, what I find to be the optimum tow-in position recreates a sound stage that provides a distinct sense of the physical space of the recording venue and offers imaging that will allow you to visualize exactly where each instrument or voice originates and provides a solid, stable, central focus. Guys, when these attributes are dialed in, image heights, how far off the floor and below the ceiling they appear, and their sizes will be recreated in a frighteningly realistic manner. Believe me, these attributes have the ability to take music playback to an entirely different level and can elevate the playback experience from just listening to music to being transported back in time and space to the original event. Lastly, I want you to use a bubble level or one of the many level apps available for your smartphone and adjust the feet on your speakers or stands to make sure they are perfectly level. Now, once that's done, take your Bosch or tape measure and go verify that all measurements for both speaker positions are within one eighth of an inch of each other. Then check the level again and remeasure everything one more time. Guys, look, you may, you may think this sounds fanatical, but I'm here to tell you, once you achieve that precision and get a chance to hear that result, you'll kick yourself for not having taken the time to do it properly sooner. Seriously. It makes that much difference. Okay. Now, you can kick back now and, and listen to a well-dialed-in system. But guys, I'd urge you to continue to refine this placement slowly, methodically, carefully, over weeks or even months of listening. And if these were brand new speakers, their voice is going to change as they run in. I typically hear changes in speakers during the first 100 hours, and even the five or 600 hour mark with some loudspeakers, often requiring minor fine tuning. So be prepared for that. And for refining imaging, nothing allows me to nail perfection better than using Roger Waters' 1992 Q Sound masterpiece, Amused to Death, which I featured in episode eight. You may listen to that again. It's spectacular recording. Finally, <clears throat> don't be afraid to experiment with minor adjustments, like using micro movements of the speaker closer to or away from the sidewall by distances as small as an eighth of an inch and then taking another listen. Now, such seemingly small moves can dramatically increase or de decrease articulation and clarity, especially in the upper mid-range. 
So when the direct sound from the speaker and the reflected sound from your sidewall combine at your ears, a phenomenon known as comb filtering comes into play. You can go out and look it up. But basically, when those two distinct sound waves, direct and reflected, interact with each other, they create a series of very, very narrow notches in their combined frequency response. Now, this combination may either cancel and nullify or combine and reinforce each other. And since the location and frequency of the notches are affected by the distance between the speaker and the sidewall, at a certain distance, those combinations may become overwhelming. With just a minuscule change of distance, they may not reinforce so powerfully, resulting in a less colored, more accurate tonality, and enhanced clarity. Guys, believe me, we, we could talk about this subject for hours. I may do another in-depth episode later, but, uh, you know, as the very basics today that we covered, um, I hope this discussion gives you enough information and maybe some confidence to tackle fine-tuning your current speaker placement and unlocking the best performance you can achieve from your music system. It's a lot of fun, and it's amazing when you hear it. With that, I'd like to offer my sincere thanks for taking time to drop by today and visit again. Remember to subscribe and to like and share your favorite episodes, as well as to post your comments and questions. Please stay safe and keep the music playing. Till next time, cheers.